Hello, YouTube. This is another PC unboxing, like I don't have enough PCs already. But uh, it's a different, interesting story, really, why I got this thing in the first place. You know, I kind of want to upgrade my do-it-yourself kind of NAS HTPC file storage PC kind of that's uh, down there. I want to upgrade it to the AM1 platform. And uh, I scavenged the parts online and I could, you know, get it for about 100 euros, but I just... I was bold and I just put up an ad like uh, who had some of these stuff laying around and was willing to ship it to me for a little less than that. In the end it cost me 100 euros but you know it's only a couple, only like one or two months old and uh, it's it includes a Cooler Master Elite case ITX which I really like. Um, you won't be able to fit down there, as far as I know, because I only have 18 centimeters of clearance there, and the case is like 20, 22 centimeters tall or something. So that wouldn't work. But uh, we're going to find out soon, and uh, I'm going to think of a way to get this working without having to bolt everything into that case, because I don't really like the power supply in the case. It gets blazing hot, even though it's not really being stressed all that much. But uh, anyway, let's get to the unboxing here, because I already crapped this bag without actually showing it. So this is all the stuff that belongs to the Cooler Master Elite case. And some other booklets, I believe, from the motherboard, as far as I can tell. You know what, let's just get stuff out of here. Asus, in search of incredible. Apparently this thing has an AMD, or an Asus AM1L-A user guide or is that an I? It's probably an I because it's ITX, so. It has UEFI apparently. Seems pretty standard really. And this is the driver installation DVD. And the case badge is still in there. That's decent. I like case badges. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the Cooler Mesh Elite Quick Start Guide, I believe, or Installation Guide, even. Okay. I should explain how to bolt things into this case. That's neat. Okay. It's going to be a long video right now, because I'm actually going to uh, open the thing up, I think. Uh, not quite sure what this thing is for. It's bent, that's what I know. As you can see, it's kind of bent pretty badly. Don't know how that happened. Looks to me like uh, a three and a half inch hard drive bay. With two and a half inch uh, screw holes, I see. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Gonna use that because, uh, as far as I know, this thing does not come with a hard drive. I'm getting a two terabyte drive soon. I might actually just copy all the files over to that thing. Um, some plastic. More Asus stuff. And the AMD Athlon case badge. So that means that this thing has the AMD Athlon APU for M1. That means that it's going to be a quad core system. I really don't know why AMD invented the AM1 platform in the way that it's, you know, been invented or brought to market. But uh, I like the formula. I mean, it's pretty much um, laptop parts put together on a desktop platform, which is very efficient and reasonably quick. I mean, if you put them side by side to the Celerons that cost about the same amount of money, these AM1 chips really outperform them, while not really consuming all that much more power. I mean, this, uh, this thing has a quad-core APU, 25 watts, with pretty decent dedicated graphics, I believe it's ready on HD8400. That's pretty cool. While the the newest Celerons have the Haswell uh, HD graphics, so not uh, not the new one like the HD 5000 or HD or Iris or whatever, just regular HD graphics for for Haswell. There we go. I want to get the plug out of there. Okay, the next bit is going to be a two-handed job, so I'm going to get this out of the out of the box and uh, let's take a look at it. I'm liking this so far. Seems pretty tiny. Okay, let's get down to the box. Okay, we got down to the box. 
So let's actually take a look at it right now. Wow, this thing is just totally unscuffed. Okay, we have a power supply built in. Just a regular power supply. The previous owner told me this was pretty much a generic brand, so it could uh, be good if I actually put a decent power supply in it. Not quite sure if I am going to. I'm not quite sure if this is a full size ATX one. I'm going to take the lid off soon and uh, then we can check uh, what's inside. But uh, at least that uh, Asus motherboard supports a couple of plugs here in the back. We have PS2s, VGA, DVI, HDMI, serial even. Okay, that's cool. 4 USB 2.0, 2 USB 3.0, Gigabit Ethernet, and uh, audio. That's all uh, pretty standard fare. Lots of vent area. You can kind of see what's inside there. This thing is really, really light. Just by feel, I gotta say it's about, I don't know, two, maybe three kilograms. Uh, let's see, we've got two USB 3 on the front, a USB 2 on the front. I believe this, is, this must be some sort of latch system. Oh no, that's the reset button. It looked like some sort of headphones plug, but it's a reset and this is power. Nice clicky feel, I must say. Uh, feels pretty high quality, really, for a cheap case that, that this is. Um, microphone headphone on the front, okay. I'm trying to keep uh, the video as steady as possible. I bought an iPhone stand, so I, when I record with my iPhone, which I'm going to do, sh I'm going to do soon. The last couple of videos I made were, were done with my iPad and scaled back to 720p. So there you go. Thumb screws, love them. And there we go. It comes off as a whole piece, and it has a dust filter on the top. That's cool. I love dust fillers. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> there is no RAM. I was not told that there was no RAM in this thing, honestly. He said just no disk. Hmm. So now I just I uh, gotta buy a DDR3. Well, that's a bummer. Okay, gotta order that straight away later. Then this thing was overpriced because it really needed to include RAM for that kind of money. But uh, as, yeah, it has a really generic 460 watt PSU. It has all kinds of adapters attached to it for some reason. Apparently didn't have enough Molexes for the liking of the previous owner. But yeah, the lack of RAM is kind of a pain in the ass. It 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 was advertised to have four gigs of RAM, and it did not. It doesn't have any. And in terms of extra connectivity, we only have a PCI Express 4x slot on this motherboard, which is, you know, plenty. And it is open at the end, so you can install, a, for instance, a 16x graphics card if you want to. But, uh, yeah. Okay, these uh, are SATA uh, connectors. We have two of them. SATA 6 gigabit per second. Um, yeah, and aside from that, we just have that uh, tiny AMD heatsink there on the APU, which is tiny by itself. Okay. So that's a bit of a disappointment. Quite a big one, actually. But what you gonna do about it? Oh yeah, right. Write a bad review of him. That's what I'm gonna do. Because this just, uh, this isn't proper. Okay. So I wanted to test it out, actually, on camera and see uh, how it worked. But, uh, this just means that I have to fork over another 40 euros to get some DDR3. That was not in my budget. Not even close. Ah, crap. 
Gotta love these kind of surprises. Anyway, that is the unboxing finished of my Cooler Master 130 Elite case with the AM1 parts in it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video somewhat, and I thank you all for watching. And uh, don't forget to like and comment if you want to. Take care, guys. See you later.